This is the day the Lord had made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to Wayman Chapel, African Methodist Episcopal Church, 407 East Avenue, D. Temple, Texas, for our morning worship service on this first Sunday in February, February 5th, 2023. Amen. We come to lift up and praise the name of the Lord. So let go and let God have his way. Clap your hands, stop your feet, open your mouth and praise him because he's worthy to be praised. Amen. Doxology, praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, our creature, here below. Praise him, our body, heavenly home. Praise Father, Son. No, believe Call to worship. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. I will feature stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. For a day and night court says better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in tents of wickedness. Because of the house of the Lord, I will guard, I will seek thy good. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Blessed are they that dwell into the house, for I have loved thy habitation, the place where thou honor dwelleth. For the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. O sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All the earth sing his praises. The morning hymn, number 405, nothing but the blood of Jesus. We were saying all four verses. Amen. Well, Lord, well, Lord. Thank you. What can wash away from sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh. Precious is the flow that makes me wonder. No other sun, nothing but the blood of Jesus. For oh, my pardon, this I see. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. All my claims and this my plea, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, that makes me no other find nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing can for sin atone, nothing but the blood of Jesus, that I have done, nothing but the blood of Jesus, oh, precious is the flow that makes me no matter. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my hope and peace. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious. And it makes me. 
Nothing but the blood Jesus. Let us pray. Will oh God, our Heavenly Father, yes. the Maker of all things, the giver of every good and every perfect gift. Yes, yes. Father, we come to you this morning, Father, in a humble way. We come, oh God, to give you thanks. Master, for the many blessings that you have been going upon us. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God, you've been good to us. Father, you have blessed us beyond measures. We just want to say thank you, God. Father, we thank you, dear Lord, for allowing us to press our way through the fog, through traffic. Some may have come ill. Some, dear Father, Body may still be wrecked with pain. But oh God, here we are. Father, we are leaning and depending on your master. Father, we are here, dear God, because you allowed us another chance. Lord, that we could assemble together with one another. Father, on last Sunday, dear God, we had no idea that we would be back again on this Sunday. But oh God, you saw fit to let us run on a little while longer. And God, we're glad about it this morning. Oh Father, we realize that there are many dear Father that are not here. Father that were here on last Sunday. But Father, since then you have called them to eternal rest. And God, we want to thank you, dear Lord. Thank you. Father, for giving us a chance to get right what we did wrong on yesterday. Oh, Father, we pray that you would forgive us for our sins, oh God. And oh, Lord, we repent of them right now, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Heavenly Father, and if we have fallen from your grace, Oh, God, we ask you to restore us, dear Lord. Father, own us as your children. Oh, Heavenly Father, we come lifting up the sick to you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, those that are in the hospitals, those that are in nursing homes, those that are in other medical facilities. We lift up those that are incarcerated today, Lord God. Father, because I know you are everywhere all the time, God. And oh, Father, while you're there, I pray that you would touch. Oh, Father, touch with a hand of healing this morning. Father, somebody need to be healed this morning. Oh, God, somebody need deliverance this morning. Father, come with all of you quickly, Lord God. Father, we ask a blessing upon our pastor. Upon his companion, oh God. Father, we ask a blessing upon the entire membership. Father, because we realize, dear Father, that soon and very soon, oh Father, these days will soon end. But oh Father, before we enter into your kingdom, oh God, we pray that we've done enough in this life. Oh, God, that we'll be able to be in your kingdom. Oh, God, you've been mighty, mighty, mighty good to us. Oh, Father, you gave us when we didn't even desire it. Father, you fed us. You gave us a roof over our head. Oh, Heavenly Father, and then you allowed the blood to still run warm in our veins. Oh, Father, we say thank you this morning, Jesus. Lord, if we had a thousand tongues, we could not thank yeah, yeah, yeah. you, Lord. 
Father, but I see that the evening sun is sinking fast. Father, we got to get in hurry, dear Lord, to do your perfect will. Oh, Heavenly Father, we know that times that have been will not be no more, Lord. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just pray for everybody in this entire world. Father, we pray for those, dear Father, who were victims from the storm, dear Lord. Some still don't have lights. Some don't have food to eat. But Father, I found you to be bread in a starving land. Your water in all dry places. Have mercy this morning. Oh, Heavenly Father, you said before the end of time, that dear father, that was going to be a falling away from the church. Father, when we look around, we can see it right now, Lord God. But father, let them know, dear Lord, that soon and very soon, we're going to have to go and see the king. Have mercy, Lord God. Father, keep us today. Keep us every day, oh God. Father, make us aware, dear God, of our salvation. Oh, Heavenly Father, let us know that when this whole earthly tabernacle is dissolved, oh God, we still got another, another home. home. Oh God, hi, dear Father. Oh God, where well, we'll be with you eternally. Oh Father, we ask a blessing today upon us. Keep us, oh Lord, this is our prayer. We pray all in the name of your son, Jesus. Jesus. Father, all, oh, dear Father, according to your will, and the people of God say amen. Amen and amen. There's What can wash away my tears? What can they? 
Eastern from day to day. It will never lose. It will never lose. It's power. This morning's scripture will be from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 30. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and, we, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supping, saying, this, is, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you, you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim, proclaim the Lord is dead till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. Yes. First Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 30. From all that dwells below the skies. Amen. All that dwells below the skies, let the Springs name Double all the bridge. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. To thee, to be, and though it be your cross that brings me, still all my soul shall be near my God will be. Hear what Christ our Savior said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And to the Father, and to 
Good morning. Good morning, Reverend Edwards, to Reverend Dr. Kena, to Raymond family. Do we have any visitors this morning? If so, would you please stand and state your church, your name and your church affiliation? Okay, good morning again. All right, our announcement today, Mount Olive, ba Mont Mont Olive Baptist Church, Temple, Texas, Black History Month, Celebration Church Celebration uh, invites you to attend a Black History Month church uh -huh. celebration. The date Saturday, 11th, 2023. The time at 2 p.m. Location again at Mount Olive Baptist Church, 10, 810 South 26 in Temple, Texas. The theme, All Believers are one in Christ Jesus. The guest speaker, Dr. Uh, George Harrison. Black History Month, Temple High School Black History Program Committee requests your assistant to provide a successful Black History Program. We are asking each church to represent uh, and, uh, and join in having a mass choir to sing the Negro Anthem. There will be uh, approximate two rehearsals. So please join us and make this a successful program. Uh, the uh, practice will be held at St. James United Methodist Church. And if you would need more information, I'll pass this on to our uh, choirs. The Tribe of Dan presents Chicken and Waffle Brunch Celebration, Celebrating Black History Week, Traditional of the Church, of the Black Church. Devotion, music, uh, the sermons. Uh, this will be held Saturday, February 25th, 2023 at 11 a.m. 407 East Avenue D, Tampa, Texas. Texas. Tickets are available from the tribe members, Sister Matt Glory, uh, Sister Gloria McGriff, Sister Savinia Williams, and Brother Dennis Williams. And the donation is uh, $10. Also, the tribe of Joseph will be sponsoring a barbecue dinner at 3010 Durango Drive, Tampa, Texas. Uh, the date, Friday, February 10th, time 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. Donation, one, uh, $10 for children, $5. Menu consists of chicken and sausage, beans, potato salad, pickles and onions, bread, cake, the tea will be drink and we'll, there will be uh, delivery available. So please call 254-760-7869 um, uh, Sister Dorothy Pennington or any of the tribe leaders, which are Ch uh, Sister Cheryl Green, Brother Louis Scott, Sister Alice Scott, Sister Florence Venable. And from our bulletin today, uh, Sunday school every Sunday at 8.45, our Bible study every Wednesday night at 6 p.m. Our official board uh, will be held Monday, February 6th at 6 p.m. via Zoom. Mail rehearsal 
uh, male chorus rehearsal will be held Thursday, February 9th at 6 p.m. Our 10th District Founders Day will be held February 9th at um, 9th and 10th. Founders Day will be held, be held Sunday, February 19th at 10 a.m. Each member is asked for a donation of $100 contribution. February 20th, the steward board meeting, 6 p.m. teleconference. February 16th and the 23rd, Sanctuary Choir rehearsal at 6 p.m. February 27th, trustee board meeting, 5 p.m. teleconference. Give, help provide relief for our Ninth Episcopal District family impact by January tornadoes. Bishop Adam Jefferson Richard Jr. Presiding Bishop, Ms. Cunny uh, Richardson, Episcopal Supervisor. These and other announcements will come from the pastor if there be any more. Thank you. Let us say amen. Let us say praise the Lord. Amen. Thanks, Sister Pennington, for those announcements for us this morning. Um, I ask if one of the stewards will get us uh, two of the plates, offering plates, please. Amen. Bring them forth and we'll have, I don't know, okay. But, uh, that's just going to say we're going to have uh, one to stand on this aisle and one to stand on that aisle, one in each aisle in the center. Amen. As Sister Pennington announced that uh, we received uh, communications from, uh, in fact, all of the pastors, 10th District had a meeting with the bishop on Wednesday night. And due to the tornadoes and stuff that went through the southern states, there were several of the AME churches uh, that got damaged uh, pretty much. And one main being in Selma, Alabama. And so he's asking all of the uh, churches to give an offering uh, so that we can send to the 10th district and the 10th district can send a an offering to the uh, 9th Episcopal district to help for the repairing and restoration of those churches that have been destroyed. Amen. We got lucky, not lucky. We were blessed. Amen. But we not out of it yet. Amen. We had ice two or three days this week, and last week at least. Amen. Some people are still without power. Amen. But tornadoes don't have a, a, a special place they go. And they go wherever. So, you know, we were blessed. But at the same time, these persons are needing assistance. So we are asking whoever can, if you will uh, give a love gift uh, and we will come back consolidated and send a check to the uh, 10th Episcopal District from Wayman Chapel uh, for the persons or the churches that were affected uh, during the tornadoes in the Selma, Alabama area. Amen. Uh, you may go forth and receive. Come back this way when you finish. Amen. Amen. Can be God's given. We are part of a connection of church where we give to help our family out. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Eternal God, our Father, we thank you now for giving unto us in the ways that you know we stood in need of receiving the blessing. And God, we realize that there are some that are less fortunate than we are on this particular day. Lord, that stand in need of assistance and in blessings. So Father, we ask that now as you have touched our hearts to give in this love offering to send to the 90th Episcopal District, Lord, to help them as they are recovering from the tornado damages that took place, uh, even up on your houses, oh God, in that area. So Father, we thank you now for each person that has given. We pray that you will bless it and multiply it as we send it forward, that it may be used to further build your kingdom here among men and to show your love to us as we're given to others that they may have. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, in reference to that, uh, also with our meeting that we had with uh, Bishop Richardson, um, his concern is that uh, with the 10th Episcopal District meetings that we have, we have four meetings a year, Founders Day, Spring Convocation, Summer Convocation, and the uh, planning meeting, 10th District. Those are the four 10th District meetings we have with the Bishop every year. Uh, there's a concern with the lack of attendance. He's asking each pastor in the 10th district to encourage their members to come and to be in attendance at those meetings. There is a cost that holding those meetings uh, uh, brings about. And with the lack of attendance now that, uh, you know, it's kind of making it difficult for them to have to uh, pay the cost to have those meetings. He gave an example of um, the Advent service in December before Christmas, had it at uh, uh, Emmanuel AME Church in San Antonio, had only 60 people. Amen. We have in uh, the Founders Day, the first meeting for this year for the 10th District, Thursday and Friday of this week. It was supposed to be at Paul Quinn College, but now they have moved it to Bethel AME Church in Dallas. Uh, the Bible tells us that in the last days, there's going to be a great falling away from the church. Now, isn't it interesting? He didn't say how the falling away was going to take place or what was going to cause the falling away from the church. But when we think about it now, you got more people that are not physically coming to church now because of Zoom, because of technology that is in existence now. Those that are able to come to church are not coming to church because they can get the same thing, staying at home. And many times I found that you see their picture, but you don't see them. Amen. And many times they turn the picture on, but then they know we're listening at what's going on in the service. But if God give you the ability to come and worship him and praise him in his house, and we choose to stay away, what's going to become of the church? The church uh, has to be supplied for financially in order to operate. Amen. And it is evident that many times people don't come, they don't usually send the finances to the church. But the church still have bills. They still have responsibilities that they have to take care of. Amen. When Jesus come back, and we have to give account of our stewardship, what we have done with the life, and what service have we rendered unto him. Because the scripture says that he's coming back with a reward in his hand to give to each person according to the work that they have done. Work is here in the church and out the church. We come in the church to worship and praise the Lord, serve the Lord with the talents he has given us. We need ushers. We need officers in the church. You can't do that on Zoom. So when Jesus comes back, what are you going to give account of? You watched on Zoom, but you didn't participate in the worship service? Amen. So we have to think about those things 
God has given us ability to do all the things we want to do, to go to all the places that we choose to go. But many times we find the church is the last place. We come up with excuses why we can't come to church, but we see we go everywhere else. How do you think God feel about that? Hmm. Amen. Even on this Sunday, first Sunday, communion Sunday, as often as you eat of the bread and you drink of the wine, you do it in remembrance of the sacrifice Jesus Christ made for us as sinners, that he died, gave his life, suffered, bled, and died for us that we may be able to live eternally. And we can't come one Sunday after month and take communion. When do you remember him? Amen. Something that has to be said. Amen. God is sending messages. Who would ever think, who would have ever thought that the great falling away that is in the scripture was due to the oncoming of Zoom? Amen. They don't come to church no more because they don't Zoom. So what? It still falls in the category of falling away from the church. See how the devil works it? Everybody in technology now. Amen. Church is going to be closing because there's no attendance. Amen. So who's going to carry forth the work that God has? So we're asking uh, again, the, uh, and one of the things I think is the problem, this is my thoughts, is the problem is that we have an in-person service, and then we also having it uh, virtual. Amen. So those that are committed and dedicated, those are the ones that will probably be in person. Amen. Those that are looking for the easy way <clears throat> or easy religion, they'll probably go on Zoom. They don't have to do nothing. They don't have to go nowhere. But serving the Lord, you got to make a sacrifice. Amen. Look what Jesus sacrificed his life for us. What sacrifice are we making for him? Is it too much to get up early on a Sunday morning and come to church to worship and praise the Lord? But we get up Monday through Friday to go to work and go everywhere else? Amen. So the uh, Founders Day meeting uh, the, on, the, on the 9th, uh, we'll be uh, on Zoom, Facebook, but also we'll be in person at um, Bethel AME Church in Dallas, Texas, 7 p.m. Thursday evening. And then on Friday, um, they're having the, uh, a special presentation uh, on the history of the church. And then they're also having a, um, a presentation about the 10th district budget. But all that's going to be on Zoom, going to be virtual. Amen. So you should have, if you don't, you can contact, uh, contact me, uh, Sister Gray, and be able to give you the Zoom. In order to attend the service, whether virtual or in person, you got to register. It's free. It's not costing you anything to register, but you have to register. And then on Friday for the two presentations going to be given, that is going to be on Zoom also. You have to register one in person if you're going to go to Bethel Thursday for the service at 7 p.m. Bishop Bryant is going to be the preacher. And then you got to register again if you're going to do virtual to be able to get the ID number and the passcode for the uh, presentations on Saturday, on Friday, on a Friday morning. Amen. All right. Uh, also, we lost one of our pastors in the 10th district. Uh, Reverend Adam Troy Carrington, Sr. He was the pastor of Brooks Chapel AME Church in Corpus Christi. He passed away 60, he's about 60 some years old. He passed away. So his funeral will be on the 17th 
So pray for his, the Carrington family, and also pray for uh, Brooks Chapel and the membership. Amen. They've lost their pastor. We also ask that you will pray for Brother Benny Kena and his family. He lost a brother. Uh, they'll be having the funeral services on this uh, Friday, this Saturday on the 11th. Uh, pray for them as they travel to Houston area for the funeral services, homegoing celebration. Uh, amen. Uh, right after the benediction today, uh, if we could, we, had to have, we need to have a special uh, trustee board meeting. All the members of the trustee board, if you'll meet me right in the front pews right here on my left, your right, there's a very important thing that we have to have to talk about. So again, if you would meet all the trustee board members right after benediction over to my left on your right. All right, anyone needing a statement uh, from the church as to what you have contributed to the church uh, for your tax purposes, asking that if you will get with Sister Brown uh, by the 11th of February, and she will give you the statements showing what you have contributed to the church uh, for your tax purposes. All right. Okay. All righty. Thank you. God bless you. God keep you. Is our prayer. Let us continue to worship and praise God from whom all blessings flow. Amen. In behalf of Black History Month, I will be reading this short information about the African Methodist Episcopal Church. The African, Meth African Methodist Episcopal Church grew out of a protest by Richard Allen after racial discrimination in St. George Methodist Episcopal Church in, eight, in 1787. Rather than suffer indignities in that white controlled church, Allen formed a separate black organization. In 1816, he organized several black Methodist congregations into a new denomination called the African Methodist Episcopal Church. In the 10th tenth, tenth times leading, in, leading to the Civil War, the AME Church was not permitted to operate in Texas in or most other parts of the slave-holding South. The first African Methodist Episcopal Church missionary in Texas was M. M. Clark. Arrived, he arrived in Galveston in 1866 after the surrender of the Confederacy and the end of slavery. Like African and Methodist ministers elsewhere in the form of slave states, Clark wanted to organize Black Methodists. Although Texas had had no AME congregation previously, many Black Methodists had worshiped in the Methodist churches of their ministers, of their masters. Clark intended to bring them into the AME church and to recruit other Methodism, other Methodism, the congregation, the congregations that he had, other uh, missionaries organized were organized, were originally su supervised by Bishop Jabez B. Campbell from New Orleans. A meeting to organize an annual conference in Texas took place in Galveston, probably in 1867. The administrators and doctrines matters for the church as a whole are attended to uh, in general conferences held every four years. Annual conferences handle church affairs within states. On October 22nd, uh, 1868, the first Texas conference met in Gavinson, presiding over by Bishop James A. Shorter. Among those present were the early leaders of the African Methodism in Texas, 
uh, Houston Reedy, uh, Stephen Patton, Emmanuel Hammett, and Johnson Reed. The conference con claimed 3,000 members and oh. that year. And membership grew steadily, through, though not spectacularly afterward. By 1890, membership in Texas had reached 23,000, and by 1926, it had reached 34,000, ranking second to Baptist among Black churchgoers. In the early years of the Texas Conference, most members, most member churches were located within a triangle formed by Galveston, Bryan, and San Antonio. Eventually, however, the number of AME members in Texas increased and spread across the state. The West Texas Conference was organized in 1875 and the Central Texas Conference in 1883. The church has four conferences. The church had four conferences by 1890 and nine by 1926. That ends the, the statement. Thank you. I don't need the masses. Man of every birth, for an answer, Jesus gave the key. unto me. For the world is hungry. God of living bread, live the same. You're a common deceit. Trust him, but not a word that you said. I want all the air to be. Oh, live them up. I lift them up. Till he speaks from eternity, God to you. Well, well, God said, if I walk right, God said, if I talk right, God said, if I pray right, God said, if I live right, I'll draw, I'll draw, I'll draw, I'll draw. I'll draw. Draw on me unto me. Well, come on and help me. Help me, little Jesus. Help me. Help me, little Jesus. Tap your hands and help me. Stomp your feet and help me. Help me. Help me lift Jesus. You said I'll draw, I'll draw, I'll draw, I'll draw, I'll draw on me unto me. Will you help me? Sisters, will you help me? Help me lift Jesus. Tell me, preachers, will you help me? Tell me, little Jesus. Somebody help me. Help me, little Jesus. Who said, I'll draw, I'll draw, I'll draw. I'll draw. 
to him. I want to help me. Help me lift Jesus. Raise your hands and help me. Help me lift Jesus. Don't you know God been good? Help me lift Jesus. Has he been good to you? No, he's been good to me. Come on and help me. Come on and help me. Shout and help me. Clap your hands. Help me. Has it been good to you? I know you've been good to me. Help me. Help me lift Jesus. Come on and help me. Don't you want to? Don't you want to help me? Oh, come on and help me. 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 Help me lift Jesus. He said, I'll draw. I'll draw. I'll draw. I'm on it, help me. Help me live, Jesus. I'm on it, help me. Help me live, Jesus. Do you really know the man? Do you really know the man? I know what he can do. I know what he will do. The light yourself in the Lord. He will give you desire of your heart. Come on and help me. Help me. Come on and help me. Wonder will you help me? He said, I'll draw, I'll draw, I'll draw, I'll draw, 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 Praise his name. Praise his name. He's worthy. He's worthy. Praise his name. Praise his name. Praise his name. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nothing wrong with praising him. Amen. Praise his holy name. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is what it's all about. Letting go and let God have his way. Spirit is moving. Because of the goodness of the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Amen. Nobody mad but the devil. Amen. Praise him, praise him. Praise his holy name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lift him up. 
Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw men unto me. Amen. Don't you want to go higher? <laughs> Lift up Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Our Father God, we thank you. For we know you always show up. Thank you for the good feeling that you're still within us. Lord, and as we lift you up, it just feels better and better. Even in the times that we're living in, Lord, just to praise, and to praise you, it kind of makes us feel better. Take our name, our minds off of what's going on around us and realize that you're in control of all things. God, we just thank you for you being who you are. We thank you now, Lord, for allowing us to come together in your house where your spirit is present. Now, Lord, we ask that you will let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. This is my prayer in your son Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. What a way to start February. Amen. Amen. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. King James recorded it this way. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which do so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Amen. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. I'd like to use as a thought or subject for a few moments. Look into Jesus. Look into Jesus. Who do you look to when something goes on in your life that is too much for you to handle? Do you look to Jesus? Or do you look to another human being which capabilities and abilities are limited. If you notice how the arrangement of the words in those two verses are, God prioritizes the actions that need to be taken in order for God to work in the way he does so greatly. Amen. Before we can run with patience, the race that is set before us, we have to lay aside some stuff. Amen. You can't carry a heavy load of XX baggage and try to serve the Lord. And when you think about how the writer of Hebrews wrote this, we must lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily beset us. We came in the world with nothing. The problem comes 
once we start acquiring stuff, gaining stuff after birth, that gets us in trouble with God. Amen. And the majority of it seems to pull us away from the purpose God has for us in life because they are things of the world. And the things of the world usually contradict what God's plan is. That's why the world will hate Jesus and everybody else that follow and serve God because they're pulling in two different directions. Amen. The book of Hebrews author is not identified. However, many believe Paul was the writer. Amen. Um, even if we look at ourselves, the form that you have in writing is different from anybody else. Amen. Many times people can tell whether you wrote something or whether somebody else wrote it for you because of the style of your writing. Could be the way you form your letters. It could be the wordings that you use, but there's a way to identify who you are. Uh, there are many similarities to Paul's previous writings that makes many believe that Paul wrote this book of Hebrews. The writer seemed to encourage the Jewish members of the church to maintain their faith in Jesus Christ and not to return to their old ways. It's easy to get off course. Amen. Many times you don't realize how far off course you've gotten because it's just that easy to head in the wrong direction. But here there was a need for the people, uh, Hebrews and the Jews that God needed to get a message to because he knew that they were headed in the wrong direction. The church had strong influence from outsiders, which tried to turn believers of Jesus Christ back to Judaism. Amen. They tried to turn them away from the teachings of Christ, the word of God, because they didn't want to hear nothing about Jesus Christ. The church has strong influences today, trying to get those that are professing to be Christians to turn back to the world, go back to their old way of living in sin. Amen. The devil wants some company. And if he see you weak in your faith, of Jesus Christ, he got a stepping place right there. If you continue to hang around with the same folk that you know don't have a desire to serve God or to please God, then he got you where he wants you to be because it's not that much further or that much longer before you're gonna be back where you used to be. That's why the old saying says, birds of a feather flock together. Amen. Many times in the law system or the judicial system, they say is that you are guilty by association. Amen. You hang with them, so you're probably guilty too. This same type of influence is present today. Uh, outsiders of the believers and family of God trying to turn Christians back to their sinful ways and seem to be even greater as we see the day of the Lord's return drawing near. 
And that ties in with, there's a great falling away from the church. Wrong time to be falling away from Christ. Because we don't know how, it's closer now than it was when the scripture was first written. And to be away from him now, not knowing when he's going to come, uh, what you going to do? Amen. He's not coming back saying you're going to go in overtime. Be too late to say, well, give me one more chance. Or one more day. Amen. In this 12th chapter of Hebrews, the writer uses the scenario of a race to get his point across to the believers about the importance of looking to Jesus. Amen. Jesus often spoke in parables. He used things that the people knew and were accustomed to in order to present his message. When he was talking to farmers, he talked about sheep and animals, uh, planting. Amen. He knew that they knew about those things. And he just said the kingdom of heaven is like. And he presented the scenario that they would understand what he was meaning. Amen. And so here the writer uh, who's believed to be Paul, he knew that people knew about races, racing, and knew about how the people were, at least were accustomed to preparing themselves to race in a race. The Apostle Paul in many of his other letters referred to a race or other athletic events to emphasize the point of his messages. May, in other words, he made it plain. Amen. There was no question as to what he was talking about and what the message was because he made it as simple as he could. At least had to be committed. Remember that word. At least then and now have to be committed. Amen. To train in guidelines in order to be competitive. If you take a shortcut as an athlete, you're going to come up short because you're not going to have the endurance and you're not going to be able to go through whatever is required in order to you to be competitive. So you have to follow the guidelines, the training guidelines, what you need to do in order to train for that particular event. The writer compares the believer's Christian life as a race in which the goal is to live with the Lord Jesus Christ forever in the kingdom of heaven. That's the goal. Just like the runner's goal is to reach the finish line. Amen. Jesus said, as recorded in Matthew 24 and 13, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Amen. It's not about starting as much. A whole lot of people start on a lot of stuff. But many don't have the endurance and are committed enough to finish. And so all that they did before they got to the finish line don't count. Because they didn't complete what they had started out to do. On this Christian journey, there are many trials, temptations, and obstacles which are meant to distract us as believers in Christ. Amen. It's natural. Amen. It's going to come, regardless how spiritual you think you are, some distractions and some temptations, trials are going to come just to try to get you off course and to try to get your mind and your thoughts off of Jesus Christ. And they are to lose focus on him and turn away back to the world of sin. Many times I hear preachers as well saying that they made me curse. Amen. They made me do this. Amen. Because why? Because they said something or they did something that caused them to revert back to what they used to be.
in verse number one, 12 chapter of Hebrews, the writer give the inspiration for believers not to grow weary, nor to give up. Amen. Look what he said. He said, well, for sin, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Hmm? Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which do easily beset us. Then let us what? Run with patience the race that is set before us. Amen. The first part of that verse talks about what? We are, 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 are compassed about with what? Uh, so many witnesses. Those that have already walked the walk. Those that have already traveled where we're traveling. Those that have already kept the faith and trusted in God. Didn't get weary, didn't give up with all of the trials they were going through. Yet still, they still was faithful to God. Those are the witnesses that uh, are looking at us. We should give all of us now inspiration to follow through and to endure unto the end. Because of this crowd of witnesses, then it said what? We know what they did and how they lived their lives committed to God. That now we should pattern our lives after them. The cloud of witnesses are references to those persons mentioned in chapter 11. You read chapter 11, it talks about faith. And it identifies all those persons that had faith in God. From Abraham all the way down. List a whole bunch of them. Amen. And those are the witnesses that what they're, they're referring to that these persons had faith in God and they endured what they were going through. They were able to run and finish the race that was before them. Those faithful servants of God has given all believers an example that we too can run this Christian race to the finish by looking to Jesus. The psalmist says that I will look to the hills from whence come my help. All of my help, and say some of it, all my help coming from the Lord which made the heavens and the earth. Because of the example of those witnesses that have already gone through, gone through what we're going through, believers should be inspired to lay aside every weight and the sin which do so easily beset us. Why? Because of the example that God allowed us to see in all those that were before us. Somebody is looking at us. What example are we setting for them? Amen. We have to live a life realizing that our life that we live in now is not just for us, especially as Christians, because somebody is watching us to see what it's like to be a Christian. So we find that genuine faith not playtime freight, and not just spoken faith, but faith that is really put into action. Enables every believer to endure temptations, trials, suffering, persecution, and even death for the sake of Christ. Amen. We do it for the sake of Christ. Hmm. Amen. For our sake, the Bible tells us he took our sins to an old rugged cross for our sake. But then what are we doing for his sake? He did it so that man would not have to die. Now, you may say, well, all of us got to die, but that's not the death he's talking about. 
The Bible says that we all got to die once. It's appointed by God that we die once because this body can't get into the kingdom of heaven. But the second death is, that's the one that Jesus died so we will not have to die twice. And that second death is die eternally being separated from God forever. Amen. So, so there's no need to fear this death unless you're not right with Jesus Christ. Because this is the only way that this first, that's the only way we're going to be able to get out of this life anyway. But if we got a relationship with Jesus Christ, then we keep looking to Jesus, then what? Then when time comes for our bodies to now separate from the spirit that God gave us, then what? We'll be able to get to be with Jesus forever. The word lay aside means to take off to strip off and to remove. And now you say, let us lay aside every weight. Amen. The sin that do so easily beset us. Amen. Lay aside, take it off, get rid of it. Put it behind us because you can't walk like Jesus walked, walking in sin or living in sin. On this Christian journey, believers must remove everything that may hinder, slow down, distract, instead of helping. If it's not helping you spiritually, then you don't need it. Because all they're doing is slowing you up. And the more you slow up, the more the devil have an opportunity to, to take control. Some hindrances that need to be laid aside are removed, amen, glad you asked. Seeking entertainment instead of fellowshipping and communing with God. Some people just like to be entertained, amen. Some people come to church to be entertained. They're on the center screen, they're in the center stage and they wanna be entertained and they do it only because why? Because they got an audience of people. That's from the preacher all the way to the door, amen. What? They're not doing it because of the sake of Christ. They're doing it because somebody's looking at them. But what? But whenever you find that you're seeking entertainment instead of fellowshipping and communing with God, then what? Then it's a problem. It, that's what you need to strip off. That's what you need to get rid of because it's not doing anything for you. It's harming you more than it's helping you. Don't get me wrong. Recreation is sometimes good. But too much takes away personal time with God. You know, I was talking to my, my daughter, and she got her little son seven years old. And I've been thinking about this for years. She says, well, Daddy, she said, um, I see a church that I want to join. I mean, I want to go to because they have children. And she want to get our children involved in church. A little boy, seven years old, she got him in athletics, you know, in the sports. And basketball practices on Sunday morning. Same time church is. Huh? We know it's happening because it's happening here. They schedule the practices for things the same time that church is normally. Amen. <laughs> so for, for me, it lets me know that what the mind of the Coaches are those persons that schedule it, what they think about God. Hmm? If they thought about God, they seem like they would arrange it at another hour where they can, where not only the kids can go to church, but they can go to church. So therefore, this is my belief. Now, everybody got their own belief. My belief that what? They're not committed to God enough to say, well, we're going to practice at another time. So therefore, what? We're going to take the time available. And it keeps children away from God keeps them away from God because they say, well, I got, a, I got a good reason. I can't come because I'm practicing. Amen. Who do we serve? God is a jealous God. That there shall not be any other God before me. Whomever you give your interest and all your time and you lot all your energies for, that's your God. What is practice going to do when Time comes for you to give account of your life. 
Or when you get that, you can't play no more. When you can't entertain no more, what's going to happen? Okay? Amen. So, uh, seeking worldly possessions. These are some examples that what should be laid aside or should be removed. Seeking worldly possessions instead of seeking God. Amen. God will understand. I'm young. I got to do this. Amen. Putting the world possession or your possessions, whether that's your house, your cars, or whatever it is that you are you in possession of right now because God bless you enough to get it. But then you allow those things to stop you from giving God your time. And listening to and watching those things which do not strengthen or build up spiritually. Amen. The devil try to get in any kind of way he can. To lay aside the sin. Scripture says, which easily beset us are those things which distracts, entangles, and trip us up, such as pleasure. Amen. You know, used to be a time when I used to say, thank God for allowing me to live long enough. I came to realize that my body got old and I wouldn't be able to do the things I used to do anyway. Amen. And I used to go out and stay out. And come back in time and say, well, Lord, I can't go to church this morning. I'm too tired. And this Sunday, I got to rest up for Monday. Amen. Amen. All right. And so what? But those are the things, pleasures, indulgence, overdoing whatever you're doing, too much of it, unruly uh, tongue. I think we talked about that once. Uh, Dr. Kena talked about it in, in Bible study. Unruly tongue. You to, can't control your tongue. Lust of the flesh and the eyes and pride. These are the, what, the, the, the sins that easily beset us that what we have to lay aside, we have to get rid of because why? Because they're hindering us from giving God our best service. If these things are not laid aside or removed, believers will never finish the Christian race. The believer must run with patience the race that is set before us. Regardless of the length of the race or the time it takes for the complete the race, believers must continue to strive for the finish line. We used to say in my athletic days that a winner never quit and a quitter never wins. Amen. Uh, determination is required to finish. Amen, you got to be determined to keep your eyes on the finish line in this Christian race that we're running through life. We have to be determined and committed to keep looking to Jesus. Amen, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Paul wrote in his first letter to the church at Corinth, chapter 15, verse 58. Be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, keep on working. One day payday is going to come. Every man going to get paid according to the work that he or she has done. Just as a runner keeps looking at the finish line, also believers, we must continue looking to Jesus. In verse number two, we are informed that believers with the expectation of finishing this Christian race to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Not only are we told in that second verse to look on Jesus, but we are told why we should continue looking upon him. It's all in verse two. Amen. We as people often stare, fix our eyes upon someone or something that catches our attention. Sometimes we find ourselves looking because there's something we see that interests us. Amen. And we can't seem to move our eyes because it, it means something to us. 
amen, that is important to us and feel that he or she, it will add value to our lives. Many times, people don't waste time on something that don't mean nothing to them. Amen. I wonder where the church fits in. Amen. By a person action, many times, let them know what is good for them or what they feel important to them and what's not. Amen. So how important is church to you based on your actions? Amen. Look at how the writer wrote it. He said, looking unto Jesus. Isn't that in the verse two? Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. There's no better example uh, than is in life than what? Than uh, to look to Jesus and what he did in his life and in his ministry. Amen. Why? Because his life was committed to his father. His ministry was about helping people. His commitment was staying the course. He was humble and obedient to what his father sent him to do. He was faithful, amen, in all that he did. He did it with all that he had, amen. So therefore we find that what? That that is the example that what? That we are given to look to Jesus because of the example that Jesus gave us of being a child of God. He didn't waver, he didn't complain, nor did he retaliate when things did not go his way. Amen, but he continued to be obedient to his father. As Jesus continued looking to his father, believers must continue looking to Jesus. Amen, he will not lead you astray, will not lead you down uh, that broad pathway that leads to destruction. But if you look to Jesus, he will lead you down that straight and narrow path, which leads to everlasting life. Amen. The word author, he is the author and finisher. The word author means that Jesus began, he created, and he originated this Christian race of faith. It all started with him. The author means he put it in place. He started it. Amen. That's why we look to him, because he know what, what it is to be faithful. He know what it is to be committed. He know what it is to be determined to doing what he's supposed to do. Word finisher, not only did he start it, but the word finisher means that Jesus ran well and he completed the race. Many times in scripture we hear how that Jesus said, my time has not yet come, which meant that he had not finished doing that his father sent him to do. Regardless what man wanted to do to destroy him, his time had not come yet. He continued to look to his father and he had the desire to please his father. Jesus experienced the same thing that we experienced. He experienced tribulations. He experienced trials. He had pain and suffering, but he lived a sinless life, righteous, and an obedient life. He started and he finished the race uh, with faith. Peter wrote, yes he did, in second chapter verse 21, for even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps, walk like he walked, amen, and we love him, we're going to walk like he walked. We're going to talk like he talked. We're going to live like he lived because we are displaying the characteristics of Jesus Christ. Regardless what you say, your actions identify who you are and whose you are. Not only must believers look to Jesus because he is author and finisher of our faith, but the author of, of uh, the book wrote, uh, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. He looked beyond the suffering. He looked beyond the pain. 
that he knew he had to face going to the cross, going to the cross because he realized that once he made it through the suffering of the cross, that there was going to be joy where he'll be back with his father. Amen. Have put all aside all the other things because he completed the race that was set before him. Jesus knew that he came into the world to die for all sinners, which brought precautions, uh, suffering, rejection, betrayal from his own. You know, he was betrayed by one of his own, but he knew all those things were going to come. But he ran the race. He completed the race because he looked and he knew what would lie ahead for him once it was over. Paul wrote in Romans 8 and 18, yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory he will reveal to us later. Amen. You might have some pains, might have some aches now, but just think about what it's going to be like. Amen. If we live right, run the race with Christ now, look into Jesus. Think about what it's going to be like when this world is over, when our life here on earth is over, then we'll be able to what? Enjoy that everlasting life. Bible said there'll be no more debt, no more crying, no more suffering. Amen. Everything will be all right. All we can do is just walk around and just praise God for eternity. Amen. Knowing that God was faithful to his word, that he never left us, nor did he forsake us. He was with us all the way through this earthly life. As I close, there are several things we continue looking to Jesus for. Well, first, we must look to Jesus in everything. Amen. In everything. In the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17, verse 28, it tells us, for in him we live, we move, and we have our being. As certain also of your poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Amen. We look to Jesus in everything because everything we are, it is because of him. Many people, including professing Christians, are ready to look to Jesus when trouble comes. But when everything is going well, they lean on their own strength and their own wisdom and their own understanding. We as believers in Jesus Christ, as our Lord and Savior must look to him in good times, in bad times, and in moments of joy, as well as in moments of sorrow. Yes, we must look to Jesus during our trials. Yes, as well as in our victories. Ah, Hebrews 4 and 16. We find these words. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. If not a sometime thing, we must look to Jesus in everything. Amen. He's always the same. He's not sometime to today and a different way tomorrow. The Bible said that Jesus never changes. Amen. He's always the same. No matter what we do, He's always the same. So we must look to Jesus in everything. Not only that, but second, I find that we must look to Jesus for everything. The psalmist said that the uh, earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. So everything belongs to the Lord. There are some people. Amen, not talking about nobody in particular. But there are some people who look to Jesus for some things and reserve other things for themselves. Amen, everything we possess, regardless of what work we did or how we obtained it, everything comes from the Lord through blessings. Amen, some depend on self or those they know to supply their needs to help in times of trouble. But the reality of it all is that Jesus Christ is the source of all things. I don't care where you get it from, it all starts with Christ. Amen. 
Paul wrote to the church at Philippi, but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. All your needs come from the Lord, not just some things, but look to him for everything. Finally, I told you, we must look to the Lord or Jesus in everything. We must look to Jesus for everything. And most of all, lastly, we must look to Jesus for eternal life. Yes, no one can see God, nor can anyone enter into the kingdom of God except through Jesus Christ. There's not enough money to buy a pass into the kingdom of heaven. There's not a person on earth that is popular enough to speak on a person's behalf. That is to put in a good word for you. Amen. Nobody on earth can do that because having faith in Jesus Christ, God's only son, is the only admission ticket to the kingdom of God. Isn't that right? John recorded Jesus saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming unto the Father but by me. So I don't care how you try to have a word in for somebody about how good they were, what life they live, if they haven't committed and confessed Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior because of the faith they have in him, your word's not going to do any good. Amen. Uh, I'm so glad today that God allows us to get the understanding of who he is get the understanding of who Jesus is and the understanding of the Holy Spirit, how that they all are one. And in order for us to get to see God, we have to live the life that God wants us to live. And we have to acknowledge his son, Jesus Christ, as Lord. Well, the Bible tells us in Jude 1 and 21, Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Yes, we must continue looking to Jesus in everything. We must continue looking to Jesus for everything. And we must continue looking to Jesus for eternal life. Amen. Throughout the Bible, we find those that look to God for their strength, look to God for help. Even those apostles that he chosen, they continued to look to Jesus when trouble came. They looked to Jesus when they became fearful. Amen. So we are to continue to look to Jesus. He is the answer to all of our questions. He is the only one that will enable us to be able to get to see God. So I want to encourage you, look to the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no other way. In order for us to make it through these times in this life here and this race we run in here on earth is to look to Jesus. He'll give us the strength, the help that we need in order to be able to make it into the kingdom. Don't take your eyes off him. Amen. You may stumble and you may fall. So look to Jesus for all things. Amen. There may be somebody today that may be carrying some excess weight. But today you find out that in order to finish this race on earth for Christ, you got to lay aside some stuff. If you want to admit now that there are some things that you need to lay aside, we invite you to come to Jesus right now. Give him your life. Submit your will to his will and allow him to lead you from this day forward. Let us stand if you're here today and you have not confessed Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior uh, because you think you're not going to be able to have fun like Everybody else is having fun. Uh, amen. You'll be able to have fun. This time it'll just be fun and giving God the praise and worshiping God in spirit and in truth. So if you're here today and you need to come and to get your relationship 
with Jesus Christ right today on this fifth day of February, 2023, you may come. I also offer yours to accept or to reject. If you feel that you are slacking in your total commitment to Christ, amen, you may come and now recommit, rededicate your life to the Lord that you will know for sure that you're in a good relationship with him. Your prayers are being answered. Amen. You may come, rededicate, recommit your life. If you need prayer, we're asking you to come and we'll pray for you that God will help you to make the right choice. Lay aside all that extra stuff that you carry and that are not of Christ, that is hindering you from serving the Lord. You may come and let the church pray for you. Amen. Time is getting short. We don't have that much time left. God has no desire for anyone to be lost when Jesus Christ comes back again. But it's up to each one of us to make sure that we prepare ourselves for his return by keeping our eyes on him. And all those that have gone before us that live the Christian life, serving God with their whole heart, soul, and mind. Are you here today? We're looking for a church home. We invite you to come and join Wayman Chapel. Amen. It's all we're all about lifting up and praising the name of the Lord. Worship him in spirit and in truth. Seeking those who are lost, helping those who are in need. That's the mission of the church. Amen. There's always room for somebody else to come and be a part of the family of God. Are you here? God bless you. God keep us our prayer. Amen. All we can do is tell you what I say to the Lord, the words of the scriptures, God's word. And then it's up to each and every one of us as to what we do following that. Amen. Thank God for his word. Thank God for allowing me the opportunity to stand and to declare his word. Today we celebrate Holy Communion. And last Sunday, the first Sunday in January was we uh, are heading back toward our traditional way of serving communion. We ask that you will still follow the guidance of the ushers and the students is, um, we don't have the bags anymore. It's in the tray. We'll do everything like we normally do prior to COVID uh, with the exception of consecrating the communion right at the table. We consecrated the communion on Friday. So it's already consecrated, but everything else we're gonna go through. You're gonna uh, line up on, the, on my left wall and the ushers will direct you to come to the altar. And when the altar is full, then they'll hold the rest of you up until we go through the readings. And then we serve those that are at the, at the altar. And then once they finish, we'll, they'll rise and they will go to my right. There'll be uh, ushers, a stewardess over there with a container that you can put your cups in. And then you go around the outside wall, go back to your seat. While they're doing that, the others will be coming from the left, coming and lining up around the altar. Amen. You can kneel or you can stand once you get to the altar. And we will serve. And once we serve everybody, then again, they will rise up. If you're unable to come to receive the off, off, uh, communion at the altar, 
then again, uh, urchins will identify who those persons are that we need to come and serve in their seat. Amen. And we will do that. Amen. All right. Let's follow the direction of this. Ye that do truly and honestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbor and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to almighty God. Those that can meekly kneel in, those that want to stand, you may stand, but let us come gather around the altar to partake of this holy sacrament. Yes. Thank the Lord, thank the Lord, thank the Lord. There's always room at the altar. Yes, yes. Thank you. Friday. On the cross, I know was the love Amen. General confession, Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, make of all things. Judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thine divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do honestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoing. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Most merciful Father, for your son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please you in the newness of life to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Almighty God, our heavenly father, who of your great mercy has promised forgiveness of sin to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto you, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all of our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to the everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Almighty God, unto whom our hearts are open, our desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, we cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. It is very meek, right, and our burdensome duty that we shall at all times and all places give thanks unto you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your holy name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory be to you, O Lord, most high. We do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful souls and bodies may be made clean by his death and washed through his blood, and there we may evermore dwell in him and he in us.
We thank God for Jesus, the sacrifice he gave of his life knowing that we were sinners doomed for destruction. But God loved us so much that he sent his son into the world to pave the way for anyone that would want to be saved from eternal damnation. He came, he lived, he sacrificed his life. He was buried and he rose again on the third day with all power in his hands. And now he sits on the right hand of God the Father, available to anyone who call upon his name because of their faith in him, to believe that he is God's son, believe that he gave his life and paid our sin debt. Thank God for God, thank God for Jesus. Thank God for his Holy Spirit that Jesus said he will leave a comforter and he's with us now, keeping us, teaching us and guiding us until Jesus come back again. Amen. Um, next month, Lord be willing, all that he blesses to see first Sunday in March, we will have the new cups, amen, for communion. I know it's kind of difficult with these, but the new ones will be, you got the bread on top, you turn it over and you got the wine under the bottom or vice versa, but it's not all the same top you got to open. So it's a little bit easier, amen. So we thank God for providing that for us, amen. All right, our hearts and minds are clear. Don't forget, right after the benediction, we want to, Talk with the trustees over on my left. Uh, first couple of pews, if you come over and we got a thing we need to talk to all the trustees with, uh, proud to our official board on tomorrow night. Official board is tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Everybody, I have email address. You should have the, the, um, the agenda and the uh, ID and all that should be in your bulletin. And it starts at six and we encourage and invite all the members to come. Amen. Therefore, we don't have nothing to hide. Everybody can be aware of what we are doing here at Wayman. Amen. All right. All hearts and minds are clear. Thank you. God bless you. God keep it. Let us stand. What do we believe in? Born of the Virgin Mary. Suffered unto Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, 
and set it on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the church universal, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. It's God from the just give me the Brothers and sisters, your dreams should not go unnoticed. God knows your dreams. Now dare to dream out loud. So the world may discover what you and God can do. Release every God-given dream so that others may be inspired to do likewise. To the author of every good and noble dream, we give all honor and praise to God. Everybody said. Oh. Oh. Amen. God bless you. God keep us our prayer. Go in peace. Y'all come back.